for fast, cheap, and reliable Madden 21 Ultimate Team coins. Make sure you guys go check out my sponsor, U4GM Coins. Use code VENOM at checkout for 5% off your order. Yo, what's good guys, Venom Fire here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my Nickel 335 defense. Right now I'm in the multiple defensive playbook. I'm going to be bringing an ebook on that in a couple of days, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But really, 335 has been my favorite formation this year, and the reason for that is it's just a lot better against the run rather than certain formations like Dollar that are still very popular, 146, very popular. Uh, it's just a lot easier for someone to go and run an inside zone on that 20 times a game rather than 335. So I'm going to be talking about the run defense and the pass defense out of it, specifically against, you know, inside zone shotgun based runs. But yeah, let's just go ahead, jump straight into it. Again, I'm in the multiple defense. Uh, and one thing about 335 is you can get a lot of speed. You can sub in outside linebackers at the DN spots, as well as get these safeties at linebackers. You, you see, we got Patrick Chung and Adrian Phillips on the outside. If I wanted to, if I had another safety, I could throw another guy in the middle. Again, just depends on what you want to do, but there's still a ton of speed in the defense. Uh, the play I'm going to be running today is Tampa 2. A lot of my um, past videos on past defense have been cover three shells, but in this video, I wanted to talk about a cover two shell in particular because uh, I think it's really good to mix in and throw off your opponent. So with that being said, let's just go ahead, jump straight onto the field. All right, guys, here we are out on the field. You see just a base 3-3-5, three, three, and I'm going to start out with the adjustments to get the best sheds on defense. So I'm not even going to jump into the backside adjustments. I'm just going to talk about the D-line adjustments. So what you want to do uh, simply is just pinch your, I usually like to just pinch my whole defense. So that's going to be R1 or RB. And down on that left stick, what that does is it pinches your defensive line, your linebackers, and it also presses your DBs. So it's going to look like this. Uh, as far as getting the best sheds, all you have to do is pinch your D-line, which is already pinched when you pinch your defense and then just slant inside. So it's gonna look like this, and then you don't wanna have this corner blitzing, so I like to just go ahead and man him up again, or just put him in a yellow again, rocketing into the backside adjustments. Right now we're just talking about the coverage, so or the D-line, I mean. So just take a look at the D-line. Again, you're slanting inside. Now, one thing is I know there's a way to get these players on a contain for them to still loop inside. I don't actually know how to do that. I spent a lot of time um, trying to figure that out and it actually wouldn't really work for me so if you know how to do that let me know in the comment section I will pin your comments and let everybody know how to do that but just for the base take a look at the D-line they're gonna do some weird looping stuff right here uh, you see they sort of loop and look at the D-tackle almost come free now keep in mind that D-tackle is very slow if you were to be faster then obviously that's a sack uh, but again just pay attention to the D-line I'll show it again here just pinch your D-line, slant inside. You don't have to do anything else on the back end. I do like to pinch my linebackers and press. But again, those are optional adjustments. adjustments. So again, we'll just get that cornerback out of the play. Again, don't pay attention to the back side, the coverage on the back end. Just pay attention to the D-line. Do that weird loop. And again, there's a way to contain. Uh, but that loop's going to come in key against the inside run, specifically under center, uh, as well as the inside zone. So that's just the reason I do it. But again... If you are able to know how, or if you know how to do those contains, let me know in the comments. Um, but even without, I've gotten some glitchy sacks, good animations, and obviously these D linemen aren't the best. So uh, if you have some fast outside linebackers there, they can definitely put in a lot more work. Uh, with that being said, let's hop into the pass coverage portion of it. Again, just make sure you do that with your D-line. Very quick adjustments, pinch, slant inside. Um, but on the back end, I got some different adjustments I like to do. So I like to press, but uh, what I like to do is throw or man up this player right here on B. So it's gonna look like this. The reason I do that in the cover two shell is to stop plays like verticals. Um, again, post routes, it'll help against. And then what I like to do with this cornerback is put him in a curl fly. Now for this particular play, when you're running a cover two shell, what you want on, the, uh, on your zone drops are cloud flats or just the flats to around 15, 20 yards. And then as far as your curl flats, you want them at five or zero to defend the hard play a hard flat assignment. So this is what it's going to look like the cloud flat. Although it looks like it's going to play underneath, it's actually playing up top, and that curl flat will be the one defending, you know, tight end routes, tight end out routes, whatever the case may be. Now you could also run it like this um, if you wanted to, where you put the linebacker there. But I've just seen it uh, to where you can still throw the tight end. The, that this linebacker just really doesn't get out there far enough. Um, but as far as manning him up, he definitely does a better job. So that's what I like to do. 
And yeah, this is pretty much the base coverage. Uh, just another adjustment you could do that we'll talk about a little bit later if they are sending their running back in or out on a route. Uh, just man him up. You got this Claude Flat's gonna defend deep on the left side as well. And then really with your user, what you're watching is RB on a drag, you know, X on a slant. The players that aren't manned up, you don't really have to worry about B if he were to be on a crosser or a post. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead, have them hike the ball here. I'll just use that spot route. And look at the D ends. You see how fast that was. And especially if they tried to roll out of the pocket, they actually get very quick shed animation. So I'm gonna go ahead, show the instant replay. Not sure why that happened, but Take a look at the D-line, just absolutely, look at uh, just that left DN right here, he's just not going to get picked up at all, and he's going to get this weird loop, and although you think, oh, you're just sending people up the middle, they're going to roll out, uh, it's a very quick pressure, and you see that table route doesn't even get to the end before we get that quick pressure. As far as the back end, you see pretty much everything's covered if they throw that, that's an easy click on an interception. Look at the corner route on this right side, he's manned up, so if he is, they do run corner striker verticals, which I'll show a little bit later. That's going to be completely covered. You see the flats covered as well. And look at the cloud flat. does a pretty good job of defending. Again, you can always turn that up to 20 yards. I have mine at 15 right now. Uh, and then you're just watching anything in the middle of the field. You can obviously do certain adjustments. So if they're blocking the running back, maybe I throw him in a vert hook. Uh, and then I don't have to worry about cross drags or whatever the case may be. But really the focus of this was my finding on the D-line. Just look at these guys go crazy up the middle. Uh, and you see the D tackle opens up free. If he weren't tr to be tripped up, he is a sack too. We have two people on a five-man protection again. Uh, even if they do block the running back, it doesn't really do much against the three-man blitz. So that's something that should be mentioned as well. But I'll show the, the backside adjustments again here. Set up the defense. And again, I'm putting LB on a curl flat. Manning up A on B. And then again, if they were to block the running back, then this player would actually act as sort of a QB spy and lurk on a little drag route. So again, it's not the worst thing in the world if they do end up blocking the running back uh, and you are anticipating them to send them out. But again, I can sort of lurk here. Look at that. Now again, one thing I will say is that the coverage on the back end or the, um, the D-line is not guaranteed to get pressure every single time. So you saw that first play. We had two people shoot that little gap. Uh, the second time we ran it, again, no pressure. So again, don't pay attention to this play. I didn't set up my adjustments, but very risky risk. I wouldn't say risky because you're only rushing three, but it's pretty inconsistent. Uh, again, for the most part, it does work and they will loop. Um, but again, sometimes the animations are dependent. And again, these are low overall D linemen, so take it with a grain of salt. But again, one last time, I'll talk about these pass defense adjustments, and then we'll hop into the run defense portion of the play a little bit because I know uh, a lot of people want to learn how to stop the run out of just this play so they don't have to go to a heavy set against a big time runner. So again, here is a look at my adjustments. Again, take it depending on whatever happens. If they were to run verticals a lot or whatever the case may be, then maybe I can just put him in a hook curl. And then obviously I know that crosser will be defended. I can just use it at the tight end. But again, it really does just depend on what play they're running. You saw again, look at how quick the pressure got, made Tanhill get the ball up very quickly. And again, the pressure very solid, so definitely go try this out online. It works very well online. Again, I think there's a way to contain. Let me know if you find out in the comments. But yeah, let's hop into the run defense. All right, guys, now we're gonna move into the run defense now. Now you see I'm not in bunch anymore. I am in a trips tight end offset. Uh, now the run concepts will be the same whether they're in an inside zone or a halfback base Whatever the case is whatever run they're running the run defense will be the same It really just depends on how you shoot the gap with your user. So again, I'll just set it up The same defense the exact same way pinch my D-line slant inside pinch my linebackers press the defense or just pinch your old defense slant inside Now as far as the pass defense adjustments what I'm going to do is just set it up Again, the exact same way. We're not against bunch, but it's gonna be the same concept. So here's a look at my coverage. You see I put that slot corner again in a curl flat. He'll act as the hard flat in this play. I manned up the running back, and then I manned up this player on Y. Now I could have manned up Chung on the uh, crossing route, which would have been B, or the slot receiver, but I actually like Y because Y is on a post a lot of time, or that deep dig route. I feel like he's more useful defending Y. Uh, and then you can use your B until he gets over to the right hash, and then you're 
you know, 20 yard cloud flat will defend it and then you can lurk a drag. It's just the whole thing. So again, they're running inside zone. They're not passing the ball. With your user, uh, since we're slanting inside, the inside will be clogged up relatively well. Now you might see the Titans actually gain yards up the middle. That's just because they have a guy named Derrick Henry at running back and they have a good auto line and the D linemen we're using are pretty awful. Uh, but really your responsibility is going to be to defend that outside. So you see again, Lawrence Guy blowing that up. Now I would have also been there to make the play had I got tripped up. And Dante Howard, Hightower is not the best user for this. He is slow. I probably should have put a safety there, but you know, it is what it is. So again, pinch my defense, slant inside, and then just go ahead and make your backside adjustments. Now, a lot of people like to complain on my videos that I do, do too much adjustments in these setups. So uh, I urge you guys to go ahead, go in practice mode, try and practice these adjustments before you run them online. Cause if you just watch the video and then go online, it will be difficult for you to make the adjustments. Obviously, if you're not familiar with them, that is something I recommend if you're struggling with the adjustments. But again, they'll run the inside zone. I'll shoot the outside. Now again, sometimes they'll go inside and it is the CPU. It's difficult to tell. So I could obviously sort of stay in the middle. But then when I go outside, I'll get picked up. Uh, more times than not, though, they will get picked up up the middle. Again, like I said, this isn't necessarily the best run defense in the whole game. But uh, it's pretty competent for being a pass first defense. So again, they'll run it. You see Dante Hightower right there to make the play. And again, it's relatively consistent. You see they're not popping off 20 yard carries every single time. And it is, you know, forcing them to have to pass the ball eventually. They're not going to be able to just run that inside zone every time. You will blow it up in the backfield with time. And again, obviously you can mix up your adjustments depending on what happens. So uh, you can start run committing or whatever you want to do. But again, high tower right there. Henry's going to break the tackle, of course. But you see, uh, if that's imagine that being, you know, 90 speed Adrian Wilson or 88 speed Terrell Edmonds, whatever the case is, that's a lot easier play to make uh, than using 77 speed high tower. So again, that's going to be it for the run defense and for the video. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments what defense you want to see next. Um, again, on Thursday. I will be dropping my multiple defensive ebook. It's gonna go over 335, this formation, uh, all my plays, not just this cover, cover two, uh, my man coverage, my cover three, as well as nickel normal, nickel 335 wide and dollar. So stay tuned for that in a couple days. Hit that sub button if you're new, follow me on Twitter, link will be in the description and peace, I'm out of here.